So, NFTs in the gaming space. Let's talk about this. Gentlemen, do you know what an NFT is? Either one of you. Yes, non-fungible tokens. What does that mean and what, like, explain, like, wh any, any idiot it's, can say what it means, but what is it? Yeah, but, idiot. and I, I am a novice when it comes to this information, but basically it's a token, it, it is a, a bit of data that is unique. It, it, it is unique in that it it is a specific set of code that could be owned, it could be possessed, and it could be handed off to someone else, correct? Is that, am I in the ballpark? Yes. So, okay. for all intents and purposes, this is a digital asset. Go ahead. <laughs> Shout out to one uh, Nick uh, of the uh, uh, of BLG Bush League oh. Gaming. I know we mention these guys a lot. We love and it's we not, love the it's, boys at it's BLG. Not like we you know, we yeah. love the guys at BLG. It's not like we have a full on collaboration with them. Like we're in league together. We just like them. No, and yeah, they're good Nick guys. Explain this to me in a way. Go back and listen to one of their episodes. Uh, go go find their library, and they talk about NFTs, and that's where I learned that information. So thank you, Nick. I definitely appreciate the education. There you have it. Yeah. So essentially, an NFT is a a digital asset that is powered by crypto. So you cannot own an NFT if you do not own cryptocurrency. It is not possible. So for the people out there that say, oh, I would just go find the JPEG, you can download the image of whatever it is or whatever thing you're wanting, and that's fine. You do not have any real world value to that JPEG at that point. That is not what it is. So familiarize yourself with these terms and stuff like this as we kind of get into this discussion. We're going to talk about how in gaming it could be something that's really, really cool and could benefit you monetarily as we move more into the metaverse and things like that. So think about it this way. There is a, a project I follow. It's called Sad Girls Bar. Okay. So I'll show you on the, on the camera. It's a pretty cool artist. She does like, like gothic style girls. And each of these girls, they each have specific traits. So each of these pictures is defined by rarity. So only certain, you know, only certain girls are going to have specific traits. Like maybe only 10% of them have like spiked jackets or only 2% of them have like fire in their eyes or something like that. They're, they're all relatively the same idea but they're all different. It's generative, it's generative art. And you get these things based on random. So the process is called minting. So whenever you go to mint a project, that means you, you kind of hear about a project. Someone's doing something. It's like, oh, that sounds cool. You go, to, you go to like mint it or basically print your copy of that thing. And then it gets sent to your digital wallet that you attach to the project. Now, they don't have access to withdraw anything from your wallet. They can only send things to your wallet address that's unique to you. You do not get to choose your wallet address that it's generated at random for you. So, I'm trying to pull up my sad girl here. That way you can kind of see. It may, it, may not, it may not come through on camera as good, but maybe it will. I don't know. So, if you can kind of see her, maybe. No, you can't really. That's okay. So, she's got like, you know, mine. She has like a sad face heart with like, she has like a fur coat. She has tears and she has like a martini. So, that's hers. Whenever I click on it and I see the rarity for it. So, I go down to her traits and you see, okay, the background is black. 58%. Of all, of all the girls in this collection, this particular project, 58% of them have that trait. Um, for clothing, only 4% have the sad heart top that my girl has. You know, like, I have a, a pretty, pretty decent rarities on, on all of these traits for her. So, not only do I own the picture, I actually own this sad girl. I own any current and future value attached to this JPEG, Okay attached to this picture so then you open up once you own it there's more incentives to to do things like for instance if you minted or if you purchased one of these girls and you register it with the creator they create an auxiliary project to where you could get the counterpart for this girl it's like a it's like their boyfriend this it's like a skeleton boyfriend basically and it's again same process like you get it for free and rarity is randomly generated on that thing. So I have no idea what this is actually going to be worth because no one owns this particular piece. But what I do have to go off of it is rarity. And there is a lot of people behind this particular project. So 
you start to see the amount, the the volume traded in Ethereum, which, you know, is a big cryptocurrency. How much do you guys think one Ethereum token is right now? What is an Ethereum token? <laughs> so, basically, you have all these different cryptos. Like, the most common one I'm sure you guys have heard of is Bitcoin, right? We've all heard, right. Of, we've all heard of Bitcoin. Do you know how, if you owned one coin of Bitcoin, do you know how much you would have today? It's like, uh, last time I remember hearing about it, it's like $35,000. Yeah, it's double that now. Okay. Yeah. 70. So it's about, well, it's about, um, it's about, six, it's, it's just over 60,000. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause it's been a while since I looked into it. Exactly. So Ethereum is just another version of like another currency. It's just different. And that's mainly what funds NFTs. So, okay. For instance, this new project that they did, there's been 13.6 volume of ETH traded you know, across the board. So 13, one, one Ethereum token is like around 4,000 bucks right now. So, you know, that's, that's decent. The first project though has way more than that. So hopefully you're kind of starting to see how the value is created. You get behind a community, the community invests in these projects, they start trading amongst themselves. And inherently those things go up in value as more people start to accumulate and start to be a part of the project. So that's the basic idea of NFTs. So let's bring that into gaming now and talk about some of the ways in which this could be like a huge benefit. Okay. So let's say, for instance, let's take something random like, I don't know, Metroid. Okay. Let's say there was a wallet address connected to your game console to which you could connect your real life Ethereum wallet to your game. And should you so desire, if you wanted to purchase a power-up for Samus that is used, like, specially or whatever, you could do so. Or maybe there's, maybe there's only a certain amount of those that were, meant, that were made available. So maybe there's people looking for that particular power-up or that particular thing and being like, oh my god, I could really use that based on my play style. You know, whatever. With a single-player game, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But that inherently has a rarity to it. People are going to want that thing. Or think about cosmetics. Think about Fortnite, right? How many millions and millions of dollars has Fortnite made just off of skins alone? Okay? It's the same concept. Imagine buying something within a video game that would give you potentially real-world value. So not only do you have the chance that you're going to be spending money on this thing anyway, but now you have the chance to actually recoup your investment times however much? That's insane. Don't it's, some games already do that though? Well, there was a there were games like there are games you can play now for cryptocurrency, but they've been removed no, from Steam. No, 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 no. To where if you like say CS:GO, if you earn like one of the rarest skins in the game and you sell your account, doesn't that technically mean it's already has real world real world currency? Yeah, but then you lose ownership of the asset. Right. So, so if, can you not sell your at like sell your NFT ever? Yeah, you can. So that's that's the big thing is as I hold my my rare, you know, my rare sad girl or my rare whatever, as more people come into this these projects, because that's the thing, more and more people are coming into this space every single day. It's be gaming is it like EA is talking about doing it. Ubisoft's talking about doing it. How many hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people do you think are going to be coming in and learning about NFTs to do this? It's going to be insane. So here's the difference. I could use my Fortnite skin or my power up or whatever, you know, and it would, you know, and these are just all, we're just talking about, per, you know, possibilities right now. This isn't like yeah. a for sure mm -hmm. thing. Right. Yeah. But are you guys kind of starting to see the potential, you know, pro, like, well, protests? yeah, it's, Go ahead. it's like what we've been doing in the analog world for years. I, I'll come back to the star Wars miniatures analog. I've got, I have this collection and in that collection, I have common items. I have uncommon items. I have rare items and I have very rare items. Those very rare items are limited and fetch a very high price. I have sold some online on eBay before for upwards of a hundred and a hundred and twenty dollars. NFTs can do the same thing, it, depending on the rarity, and that's it's, what you were alluding to earlier. It's the exact if it's a same unique thing. item, then you get to set what the value of it is to you. And if someone else is willing to pay that price, then you hand that code, basically. You hand that unique item over to them, and they pay you 
X amount of Bitcoin, Dogecoin, whatever they want to pay you. <laughs> Ethereum, or, yeah. Or Ethereum. And now you have something of value that is quantifiable. Yes. Yeah, it, it makes perfect sense. And, and this is, it's just, I'm surprised it's taken this long to come up with this system, this ecosphere. Well, here's the thing. Here's the difference. Smart contracts. Whenever you're in a a you know relationship with an individual or you know you're trying to make a sale with an individual there is a interaction there for the most part they're going to leave you a good or bad review on ebay they're going to leave you whatever the computer decides the contract they decide the terms they decide everything and there is a cost to selling an item there's a cost to buying an item like gas fees to buy an nft you know you are going to have to pay a fee to do so so if you don't have the correct amount, I mean, that fluctuates based on how the economy within, you know, all this stuff is. So it is one of those things like, yeah, it's not it's not for everybody at this point, you no. know. No, certainly not. But you're starting to get it. You're starting to get it like with the rarity. It's it's like there's the equivalent of collecting Pokemon cards or the equivalent of collecting whatever. Yeah. Or the ability to be a part. Like, for instance, me and Mike, you know, we're talking on the phone. We're talking about uh, Mila Kunis's new project, Stoner Cats. So... They made this show. They had an idea for a show. They could probably pass this idea around to their producer buddies and like try and get this thing made. But by the time it got back to them, their original idea is not going to be there anymore. It's going to be tarnished by all these different other guys that just want to make money. So now you as the creator hold the power and you have that direct connection with your audience. They, de they decide the fate of X, Y, and Z. Like They decide the fate. Like for instance, with the Stoner Cats, they are able to... Like if you bought a uh, a cat or you know a character from the show that they created, that gave you access to the show. So then, as the show is going, you are able to now make decisions to see where the show is going to go because you hold that asset. Like you're a part of the club, basically. Yeah. So gaming is doing it right now. There's one called Riot Racers. Like there were parts that you could like mint for your car, like a specific tire. Maybe you wanted, uh, like an acquaintance of mine, like she really wanted a Volkswagen Beetle. So she got one like she was able to mint it and like she tricked it out and made it look awesome. And now she's going to be able to use that car that she got in a digital race. So it goes beyond just the idea of a JPEG. It's not what it is. It's a digital asset. It's the same thing as buying a stock, except now it actually has, you know, you can relatively control where that goes in a way just by being a part of the community. So let me do a little thought experiment to see if I'm on board with you here. So let's say the not not Infinity, but whatever the next generation of Halo, if I decided I was going to play it and I, I had my BR rifle and I bought specific items to add to that BR rifle, specific skins or whatnot, or things that modified that weapon to something I specifically liked and made that in code an nft that was specifically unique to my character and then after six months or so of you using it i wanted to put it on a market and somebody wanted to buy it there could be an exchange there yes. within the game yes for a unique item yes that would take place or a unique skin yeah. or so, it's yeah. like okay guys there's only a hundred thousand of these skins out there it's yeah. ultra rare and I happen to have one of them, and someone and I'm offers it you. on the market. So. so, and think about it this way: let's say someone people are crazy when it comes to collecting. So, oh yeah. yeah, what would happen is you'd have your wallet set up, you'd have your game connected, it'd be seamless. So, all it would take is for that code to unlock the item within your game, and if it disappeared, like once you made the transaction on your wallet, let's say you were checking your wallet, and someone's like, "Oh my god, that guy has that skin," because you have a JPEG that says, "I have the freaking ultra rare skin." Then they can make an offer for you, to you directly, and say, "Hey, I want that." You know, not only to you, but anyone who has that item, they'll say, "I'll pay this amount for anyone who has this item." And anyone can offer it up if they. And it may they be want ten to. times what you paid for it. Yeah. And somebody could conceivably corner the market and drive up the price, and you know, you've got all of the things you, that happen in exactly. capitalism well, anyway. So. Yeah, there's a big influencer that says, you know, ninety-seven percent of the. Uh, you know, the market right now are not creators, are not people who are community driven. They're flippers. Yeah. And there's a lot of which that's fine. There's tons of money to be made. Like the, pro the problem is that creates bubbles, as we've seen in the real world. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there's there, but, we're, know, that's yeah, just, that's, the, that's the name of the game. It's the exact same thing. There's a lot yeah. of people that will refuse to, 
you know, buy these things and do this stuff just because there's a lot of activity. When there's a lot of activity on the system, that drives gas up. Like my sad girl, okay? It was $150 just to get it, just to buy it. That was the fee. That wasn't the cost of the item. That was just to buy the item is what it cost. Yeah. And that can fluctuate in a few minutes. That can go up super high. That can go up super low. Like it's kind of a crapshoot. So again, it's one of those things like if you're not learned about it, and you don't have, you know, it's like, oh, this is the only 500 bucks that I have or whatever. It's probably not for you. Like, you have to be willing to part ways with it. Like, you, you have to not miss it. So it is, it, you know, it, it's like they say, it takes money to make money. You Go know, it, it really comes down to the fact that it, you, for those people that have done the research and that are in the know, an NFT is no different than a stock in a, in a company in the real world. It's just a matter of what do you want to put value in? How much do you want to risk? And then you just see what the market does. And yeah. these markets are going to, they're, they're going to be constantly in flux. They're going to be constantly developing. They're going to be disappearing. They're going to be switching. So, you know, yeah, it, it makes sense that this is where programming is going. Well, and it is, di- it is similar to stocks, but it's also different in that whenever you align yourself with the community, think about, okay, we're Star Wars fans, right? There's a generalization of we love Star Wars. There is an emotional attachment to that thing. Whenever you buy stock, I have no atta- emotional attachment to a stock. It's like it's like putting money in a savings account. Yeah, but you can't say that. There's probably somebody that could care less about what they're actually buying. They're just looking at the possibility of making a huge buttload of money. <laughs> but that's the thing is it's it's just like any other thing. It's not guaranteed and Right. The, the quality of the project is based off of how well the dev team, like at, at the root of these projects are creators, artists, musicians. Like yes. there is, it is a completely different, it's a completely different thing than just a stock exchange. There yeah, is, but, but I guarantee you in another 50 years time, it's just going to come down to speculators speculating and investing. And yeah, the, the, the creative an artistic community will continue to do their thing, but it, like everything else, the the people that truly believe in uh, that where where it's at right now with the grassroots, uh, that's eventually going to dry up and go away, and it's going to switch over to the people that have all the money, or or all the Bitcoin. It it, it may not though. That's the thing is it's so hard uh, to predict. No. It's so hard. Well, that's the thing. It's it's no, not you, like there, if there's one constant in the universe, it's human greed. That so is that true. will yeah. happen. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it may not happen today. It may not happen in 10 years. It may not happen in 50 years, but it's going to happen. Well, just, point. just like with any other investment, like I said before, nothing is ever guaranteed. So true. if you want to be a part of the ecosystem, ecosystem now, right now is the time to like start investing in it because it's going to be insane. It's going to be huge. Do it now and because your window is going to close pretty quick. It may be in 50 years. Who knows? <laughs> this Things change so much in this ecosystem. And yeah. yeah, you are right. Like there is one thing that doesn't change and that's human greed. There's at the same time, I've seen people give away NFTs worth thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. $30,000 for an NFT. Give it away. Well, you to know, somebody. every every billionaire in the world is a philanthropist, also. Sure. Yeah. So, of there course. There you go. I but mean, you, at you, the you, same you, time, yeah, it's it's. <laughs> there's an old proverb that you know there is nothing new in the world, and, and yes, this is new for. We we've already said it. It's not cyberspace anymore. It's the metaverse. Um, it's it's new. It, it's it's a, it's a wide open frontier, and new rules can be made. But eventually, those new rules are going to give way to the old way of doing things, which is human sure. nature. That's just yeah. how it's going. Well, to be. and if the if the government ever finds a way to centralize it, maybe that'll happen. But until it does, until that does happen, it's a completely different scenario. Yeah. In that, there's opportunities to be had. There's a lot of opportunities to be had, and there's not there isn't someone with all the Bitcoin or all the Ethereum out there holding on to all these projects like. There's the, the amount of volume being traded per project is it varies from person to person. So, I mean, there's a lot of people that want to help a project. So they'll literally sweep the floor. They'll literally buy the floor out of a project and they have it. Those are their assets. That's their stake in the community. They've chosen to do that. A lot of people will buy the entirety of a project just because they like the art and they have the money to spend and they're collectors. Like I think about people who go in and they buy 
high value paintings or high value art that speaks to them because they can. That is how we should be thinking about this rather than, oh, this is just a greed thing. There will be people out there that do that, but the amount of a th the amount of crypto that's being generated all the time and that's already out there, there's no way for someone to get their hands on all of it. It's impossible. So I will say that, but I want to kind of circle back around. I've, that was your, kind of your NFT 101. We we're talking about the pros in gaming, like Halo, whatever. Yeah, you can get the special gold suppressor with the special charm and all this stuff, and you like has all these traits, and you can sell that. Let's talk about some ways in which it would be bad. We could potentially see the biggest one being um, power ups being bought that are X amount of dollars, right? That essentially makes any game you're playing pay to win, right? Yep. Um, that could happen. I, do, can we think of any Mikey did you have it sounded like you wanted to say something a while or it looked like you wanted to say something but I was on a train of thought which you know time I, mean? I don't know go ahead though do you have uh, any questions you said you had questions on the phone Mikey well you answered most of them with your spiel oh but well. uh yeah Ethan was asking all the questions I was like oh yeah that makes sense yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah um, but no, yeah, it's going to all go downhill in probably like 15 years. <laughs> there you go. Using cash again. Yeah. And credit cards. Exactly. Probably yeah. not. Probably not going to happen. Remember Bitcoin like two years ago? F yeah. 50 years from now, there's going to be a <laughs> generation of kids that are going to be like, have you heard of the dollar? If you guys <laughs> think that Bitcoin is, you guys are. <sighs> no, yeah. I mean, I get I get it. Like, Here's the yeah, thing, though. Yeah, people, you... I, it's my time to shine, all right? Go ahead. Go I've been ahead. sitting here quiet for like 20 minutes. Do it. Go. <laughs> no, like I get it. It's stock market. It's a digital, it's a digital age, you know, like that one song. But I I don't, I don't think people are ever going to get past tangible things. It's also a generational gap where like older people now are not going to get it. Yeah. Like, they'll be I, dead. That's why. Yeah. But also younger people now like me. I'm not touching. But that's any the thing. Of that, you are ever. not. You are not young. I am not well, young in this space. I'm, we are. I'm, we are not young. Still, we are. We're we are still old. pretty young. Just because we're not teenagers does not mean we're not young. No. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. Like teenagers, even like we, teenagers aren't young anymore. Is no. that the new thing? Yeah, basically. Like oh, you, oh you God. in this space at least, like the space we're talking about. Yeah, like we're ancient already. <sighs> It's, right. it's hard to wrap your mind around, but once you do, like, and I think a big thing too is it's like, oh my God, like $4,000 for one coin. No, you can buy portions of a coin. And if the price of the coin goes up, whatever you've bought, that goes up, like, or goes down based off of it. It's, you know, it's, it's a lot to wrap your mind around for sure. But it's, it's pretty simple, actually. I mean, like for me, cause I, I get it. Like it's not. And the crazy thing is that we get one major, uh, uh, hot, uh, I don't even know what the class system is, but we get one, you know, bullseye shot from the sun, solar flare, hits Earth. We're all dead. Zaps the servers. All of that wealth is gone in a, yeah. in the blink of an eye. I mean, it yeah. could happen. True. Not to say that it will, but it could happen. I mean, yeah, for sure. So we're 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 just building another house of cards. the 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 economies of the world as they run now is a house of cards. And this this metaverse economy that's that's growing right now and is become is gaining traction and becoming more and more prevalent in society and filtering down yeah. to you know dumb people like me and Mikey. Well, and you know, it's just gonna thing. it's just gonna continue to it's a it's another house of cards. There came a time where we all had to realize that we have to go to work each day or we have to provide for our family and we have to do X, Y, and Z because forever. that's just what you do. <laughs> doesn't mean you like it doesn't mean you want to be a part of it doesn't mean you want to conform to it and I, that's what i'm saying i'm excited about it because i've just now come around to the idea of like holy crap this is where it is going whether i like it or not whether you like it or not whether any of us like it or not everything you just said correct it could all be gone in the blink of an eye maybe it will be someday i don't know the fact that I hope it, so. it will be gone someday. <laughs> I'm, for a, sure. I'm a little, little bit of an anarchist. There will. It will well, that's the thing. This is literally built off the precedent of being anarchy in that it yeah. doesn't have anything to do with the U.S. Dar dollar and it cannot be tracked. And I'm going to totally show my hand here as a hypocrite. It scares me. It really does. <laughs> it, it It is. It is a fascinating world. That's for sure. But, yeah. uh, you know, here's the thing, though, is this these types of conversations are why I think it's so rad, though, 
or why I think it's so interesting for the gaming space because that is something that I'm going to find myself doing to think of a time where you could be making money playing video games because you have acquired, you know, NFTs or you've traded, you've bought and traded these things and, and done this stuff. And like now you have an ultra rare item and, you know, you've quadrupled what you've done. And now like maybe you have some other items you really like or whatever. Like there's so many opportunities, you know, for cool things to be happening. There's also a lot of really, really like Ethan was saying, there's plenty of chances for companies to be greedy and take advantage of people who don't know about it. What I'm telling you is that this is going to be a mainstay in our society and you better freaking figure it out if you want to play video games because it's going to be a thing. And if you don't get educate yourself, you're going to lose a lot of money is all I'm trying to say. I'm trying to help you all. I'm trying to help everybody here. So NFTs in the gaming space, a lot of pros, decent amount of cons, could be really cool, could be crazy. It's going to be crazy. Let's get nuts. You know what I mean? <laughs> all right, moving on. Enough of that. Enough of that. Hey, thanks so much for showing up. If this is your first time here, I would really appreciate it if you consider subscribing. It would seriously mean a lot. A fun fact for you, many YouTubers actually get most of their numbers from people who are not subscribed. So if you enjoy my personality, if you enjoy the content you've seen here, consider subscribing. I would seriously, seriously appreciate it.